Uh, are you excited to be in the house of God today? Amen. 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 No place I would rather be than in the house of God. I mean, I want to speak to you real briefly this morning about something that I've been kind of, uh, something something the Lord has, has been impressing in my spirit in the last, well, the last couple of months or so. And, and, and how many of you know that as, as your pastor or the pastor of Hattiesville Community Church, I have one goal in mind. And that goal is simply to get you closer to God. Amen? Sure. It's not to make you rich. It's not to make you the, the best person in the world. And, and, and you know, my, my job as a pastor is simply to get you closer to God. Yes. As a matter of fact, Wednesday night we're in Hebrews chapter 6. And that was one of the things that we learned. That that was the job of the priest. To get the people closer to God. He wasn't an advocate. He wasn't the, the mayor of the city. And he wasn't all. No, his, his sole purpose was to get the people closer to God. And then God takes it from there. Amen. So this morning, I want to speak to you this morning about relationships. Our relationships in Christ. Uh, and if you followed uh, in the last couple of, uh, the first, when I started on this little journey here, I spoke the first time was living out our faith. And then after that, the following Sunday, I spoke on living as God's people. And, and, and last week we honored Pentecost, so I kind of skipped. But today I want to get back to that mindset. Living in, living, in, living in right relationships, right? God in your relationships is important. Because you know what's the ultimate goal of a Christian? You've often heard people say, when you get to heaven, the Lord's not going to ask you or congratulate you for being there. He's going to ask you, who did you bring with you? Yeah. Amen. And the ultimate goal of the Christian or the man or woman of God is to bring somebody else. To bring your friend, bring your family members, bring those that do not know Christ. And you've heard me say this as well. What is your greatest weapon in bringing someone else to Christ? Your life. Your, res your representation of what Christ is doing in your life. That's the ultimate. I mean, that is the ultimate tool that you have. When you, when you stand up to represent Christ, whether at home, whether at Brooks of Brothers, whether at, at, the, at the ballpark, whether at Splashway, wherever you're going to uh, raise or represent Christ, the first thing that people will do is look at your lifestyle. Amen? And, or your relationships. And, uh, and, and today I want to just I'm going to touch on three of them real briefly. One is going to be the, your relationship in society. The second will be your relationship in your home. And the third will be your relationship in the church. And those three things, I believe, can, can, can grow us as men and women of God and allow us to display Christ on, on, on a whole nother level. Because what I have witnessed in the past couple of years, I mean, in the past couple of months, is that society seems to know about what the church is against versus what the church is for. And I believe that if we can begin to show society what we're for and, and quit preaching about what we're against, we just might get back to winning souls for Jesus. Amen? Because we are living in a time where, yeah, the world is corrupt and it's gone crazy and everything. But this, is, this God has not changed. Just like he rose Lazarus from the dead. Just as he was with Paul and Silas. Just, I mean, these are the things that we need to begin to demonstrate in our lives so that people can understand, hey, I know what I'm against. I, they know that we're against certain lifestyles. They know we're against certain, you know, they know these things that we're against. But do they know what we're even for? Yeah. Amen? Do they know that we're for healthy relationships in our schools? Do they know that we're for healthy men and women in, uh, in, in their homes? Do they know that we want healthy men and women uh, running our country, running our city? Do they know these things? Because, you know, it's important where we, want, where we raise our children. Amen? And if they're turning away from the church, what good, who's going to end up? Who's going to end up the principal? Who's going to end up the mayor? Or who's going to end up on city council? Who's going to end up in the president's office? Who's going to end up if all they know is what the church is against and not what the church is for? And I believe, as your pastor, as the pastor of Hattiesville Community Church, if there's anything that I want to demonstrate, it's what God is for. Amen. And that is 
Amen? Make sense? Right. You agree? Yes. Man, I, I, I'm like, and, and this is kind of, I've been, I've been, this, this is why I, 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 I'm going this way. Um, First Peter 2, let's begin, um, how do I want Let's go to First Peter two thirteen, and we'll begin there. Submission to the government. Wow, this is gonna be fun. Amen. First Peter chapter two verse thirteen. The word of God reads: Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for a vice or wickedness, but as bondservants of God. Verse 17. Honor all people, love thy brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Here, the Apostle Peter is referencing to submitting to the governments. What is the scripture when you think about this? 2 Corinthians 3.17 says this, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Freedom. Correct. The Bible says in John 8 that he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? So think about this freedom. That, that freedom. But now if we reference, look at this. Uh, 2 Peter 13, 16. Look what he says. As free. He's talking, right? As free. I know you're free. I know you're a Christian. I know you've been saved by grace, right? I know we all fall short of the glory of God, but the gift of God is eternal. We're free people. Amen. Glory be to God. Walk in happiness, man. Be delightful. You know, be encouraged. You're a free man. Amen. But look, look what Peter says. He says, but as free, not using your liberty as a cloak or vice or wickedness. Because, see, it's easy to feel free and think that I have the right to speak the way I want to speak. Or that I have the right to come and go as I please. Or that I have the right to entertain certain life. And you follow me where I'm going? And Peter is saying, just because you're free does not give you the right to speak the way you want to speak. Or to, you follow me? I need you to understand this because it's important that I, I know we're free, right? God has delivered us, but this freedom that, that, that he's talking about, it, 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 he's, he's saying just because you're free, don't take advantage of it yeah. because not everybody's free. The, the, the man on the other side of the gas pump may not be free. And you're the only witness that God has ordained for that moment. And here you are, a free Christian, griping at the <laughs> gas pump. Here you are, bashing the president. Here you are, talking about the school principals. Here you are, and you're free, and they are not free. Can I, can I tell you this? If anyone is going to complain about gas prices, it should not be the church. Because the, believe, the unbeliever says this, but you think he can heal my cancer. You say he's the God on the in the mountain, and he's the God in the valley. You say all these other things, yet all I hear from you, listen, we are not only called to be good church members. We are also called to be law of 
law-abiding citizens. <laughs> Representatives on the outside versus only on Sundays. Yeah. Amen? The person you are when you look in the mirror getting ready on Sunday morning is the same person you should see in the mirror at the gap. Yeah. Make sense? Are you following me? This is, this is our, our relationship with society. And sometimes the unbeliever only gets a glimpse of God through you. Make sense? Yeah. This, then, then, and this is what, I mean, and I'm, I'm speaking to myself as well. Because it's easy for me. You know, I filled up yesterday. It was $108.02. And, <laughs> and it was easy for me to say, like, woo. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I still have to put 50 in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can easily, I can easily lose my testimony. But I have to understand. Because listen, my goal is not for me. My, I'm thinking of the next man. I'm thinking about the, the woman on the other side of the gas pump. And that's, 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 I, I have to take advantage of that. And yeah, times are difficult. Times are dark right now, man. There are things going on in our world that we thought we could never, I mean, I had conversations last week and, I'm, and I was thinking, I was asking one guy, do you remember any of this stuff happening when you was in, high, in school? And they were like, no. Like, nothing. And, and now it's, it, it's, it's crazy to see what's going on. But, listen to this, Peter is telling us to submit to those who are in the government. And here's the thing about it, is people say, well, you know, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't, and I understand all that. But I also know this one thing, that God is a God who does not change, right? We learned that in Hebrews as well. He's immutable. He does not change, right? So, here's the thing, who's to say that the times that we're in right now is not a part of God's perfect plan? We can't negate that because we know that there's coming a time. It's going to get difficult. And our primary focus should be to save as many as we can before times get tougher. Because the more we can save, the more they can save. And the more they can save, the more chances are when we all get to heaven. Amen? Reminds me of a little old song called, When, I, uh, 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 when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. <laughs> There, I'll be there. Come on now. Nobody remembers the song? Okay. That's kind of like the fruit stand between Quarrel and Yoko. <laughs> Tito, do you remember the fruit stand between Quarrel and Yoko? Dixie. It was called Dixie's Fruit Stand. I need somebody to remember with me. <laughs> they, don't, they don't believe me. Between Quarrel and Yoko by Mr. Herrera's house. If I don't write it, thing used to be, used to be a fruit stand yeah, on the corner. Yeah, it's a corner lot right there. Yeah. It's Dixie's. I remember. I'm not. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, thank you, thank you. Anyways, uh, listen to this, brothers and sisters. Please know this: that our servants, our service to the kingdom of God, is not measured by our church attendance, the wardrobe we wear to church, our servant to towards the service of God is out there. Out there. Yeah. Do you know like today, you know what we're doing? We, we celebrating the day what God has done for me throughout the week. Yes. This is, listen, this is when it gets good. When you're out there in the world, when you're having a relationship with society, man, when you're smiling at that gas pump and you're, and you're singing and oh yeah, and you just, it, it, you're just showing the joy of the Lord and you're at those school meetings and you're at the ball field and, and you're just sitting out there. This is, this is, your, that's how you measure servitude or service for God. Not on church attendance. Thank you for being here this morning. Don't get me wrong. I honor every one of you. I, don't get me wrong. It is because of your faithfulness that we are who we are and we are who we're at. But let's not measure, let's not take advantage of that. And let's remember that the battlefield is out there. Let me, I need to get somewhere. Um, let me go to this right here. Peter says, submit to all governing authorities. Right. 
Now, let's, 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 let's get this clear. The only time I don't submit is when what they're trying to get me to submit to pushes me against the Word of God, yeah. the infallible Word of God, right? Now, listen, if it goes against the Word of God, yes, take your stand, right? right? God will honor you. Yeah. God will honor your position. God will, not simply because of who you are, but because of the Word, right? right? He says, anything on my Word, he says, it will not return void. Now, if the government tells you to start, you know, it's kind of like when all this COVID stuff broke out. And people got to like, oh, I mean, you should have just seen. And as a pastor, I'm thinking, well, Lord, what do I do? And, and, and you know, my prayer was to, a matter of fact, the meeting with Brother Sylvester and Brother Lewis, this was the scripture that we went to. The Lord says to, to submit to all government authorities. Unless, and now if they're asking me to shut down forever and sell all our thing and, and give all the money to the government, no, no. <laughs> That's a whole other ball game. But when, we, when anything that is not violating my right to believe or worship God, no, I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to represent well. Because, listen to this, the principle is to submit to authority except when authority leads me to disobey God's law. Living as law-abiding citizens is God's will for you as a believer. God can use you more out there than he can in the church. But you got to have a good relationship out there. At the gas pump. At Walmart. At Brooks Your Brothers. At H-E-B or wherever it is that you go shopping. Splash. Whatever you, wherever you go, you have to have a good relationship. Now, let's jump over real quick to uh, Work. Submission. I'm not going to read this all, okay? So, your homework, right? Go read the rest of this in chapter 3. S submission to your masters at work, right? Your boss, right? Honor him. That's a relationship, right? How can you honor your boss? What does the Bible say? Work unto him as you're working unto God. Right? That's a relationship that you have at work. You know, I still go back into the place where I used to work. And they always tell me, hey, are you praying for us? <laughs> because when I was there, I had honor amongst them. Right? They, I honored them. I worked, and I worked, and whoosh, and whoosh, ah, they whipped me in the back and everything. And I was still working. I will work as I was working unto God. Why? It's because that is my relationship with the world. Amen? That is the relationship that God had for me. At that moment. And you know what I was doing? I was honoring God. When they asked me to stay after five, I honored God. Yes. Well, when they asked me to come in on Saturdays, I honored God. Now, you asked me to miss Sunday church? No, but No. That's where I draw the line. Right? And it's the same thing. Uh, I wrote this. Do you take the bonus? <laughs> yeah. At the end of the year. Right? You take that. Right? Why not honor him all year? At the end of the year, you're going to take it? Makes sense because think about it. How does it say? Uh... What, how did Job say? <clears throat> Why not honor him in the bad? He's done all this good for me. Why not take the good with the bad? Right? What did the wife say? Curse him. Curse him. No. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Even in difficult times. Even whether the gas is $2 or $10 a gallon. He's still God. And he's still Jehovah Jireh. He still provides for the church. And do you know who's doing the most griping right now? The church. Saddens me. Leaders in the church. Times are tough. Times will get tougher. 
But the church must remain the church. We must remain stable. Our testimony must remain relevant. We must remain the representation of Christ in tough times. God will honor you when you endure difficulties. Wives, relationship at home. It's another one. Society at work, and your wife at home. What does it say? Wives likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. That even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their lives. Of their wives. Oh, my husband don't go to church. Oh, my husband don't do this. My husband don't go to prayer meeting. My husband don't do this. My husband don't do this. What does the Bible say? How you act might win him to Christ. Yeah. Right? Submit to your, your job. Getting back to the unbeliever and the believer at the gas pump. Your good deeds at the gas pump may convince the unbeliever that you that what you represent is really worth trying. Because in reality, that's when it's all said and done, that's what they're after. Can they see in your life that what you talk about is really worth changing their whole lifestyle? Yeah. And if every time they see you, you, you have a negative impression, chances are that they, they, I mean, they're going to be like, well, why am I going to act like you? I mean, what do I have to change about me? We we going to delight. And same thing right here. What if the wife always comes home, wow, 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 and you didn't go to church, and the pastor said this, and wow, 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 and then wow, 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 and then they're looking at you like, no, that's relationship, right? The same on the flip side for the husband, right? What does it say? Honor your wife, your relationship. And here's the beautiful thing about this. If the, if the man loves his wife and the wife honors him, when you're in town, guess what happens? People are going to see, man, look at the way Sylvester honors Melissa. Look at the way Melissa loves, I mean, honors Sylvester and Sylvester. Look at the way, man, I wonder what church they go to. Man, did you see Tito and Sarah over there, how they honor and love each other? Did you see Randy Rick? Man, how they honor and they love each other? And here it is. Do you see this? And, and guess what happens? They want what you have. But think about it on the contrary. Instead of fussing about the gas, you're fussing about your husband or your wife. Yeah. This is being a testimony. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, as the pastor of Hattiesville Community Church, for the record, pastor of Hattiesville Community Church, a man will never serve up here, whether on this worship team or on this pulpit, if he cannot honor his wife. I'm going to put that out there just in case somebody's listening. To us. Because if a man is not honoring his wife, listen, he cannot speak to anyone about spiritual maturity because it is a biblical foundation that the man honor his wife and the wife love his earth. And the Bible goes even further than that and it says, you know what? If you don't honor your wife, you can't even pray for them. Because your prayer goes right here, nine foot three inches. It's about as far as it's going to go. It's going to hit the ceiling. And I know it's tough. But keep that in mind when you're in your home, right? And you're in your relationship. And you have, you know what? Honor your husband. Honor him. Love your wife. Why? It's a testament. You, you know what's missing in the world today? Healthy, healthy relationships. Men and women that are standing together, strong. In the world. Thank God for the men in our church. Mm -hmm. Thank God that at our size we equal women. Mm -hmm. Go to a mega church and you see and do the math. How many men are there and how many women are there? 
Thank God that our church, we are me, me, raising men up. Because what's missing in the world? Solid men. Relationships. Last one, and I'm going to get out of your way. The church. Your relationship. Your relationship in society, your relationship at home, your relationship with your wife. And now listen to this. Your relationship with each other here in the church. This is a good one. Because this is where we're at. A well-speaking, scripture quoting, worship leader, lead, worship leading, listen to this. It's, it's not the definition of, of a mature Christian. You can quote all the scripture, you can sing all the songs, you can do all these things, and that will not define to me that you are a mature Christian. You know what does? Look what I wrote down. Your relationship with society does. You can, we all look good right here. We all look good today. Your relationship with God defines whether your spiritual Mature, whether you're spiritual, mature. Not here. You look good here. Got your Bible with you. Got your little pen with you. You, you look good. Out there is where you define spiritual maturity. If we back up all the way, listen to this. If we back up to 1 Peter 11 and 12, he says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against your soul. Verse 12. Having your conduct honorable among Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may be made by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of his day. What does he say? Your conduct honorable. Where? Amongst the Gentiles. Where? Not in church. Out there. When you're out there at the gas pump, when you're out there walking, it, wherever it is you go. That is when you're honorable before God. Relationship in the church. Every one of us here, we have different thoughts, we have different ideas, we have different things that make us upset, different things that encourage us. We're just totally different, right? And this is the beautiful thing about our church. Here's the key with your relationship. We have one common denominator, and that common denominator is Christ. Right. And our goal is to share Christ with others. If we want to be a soul winning church or a church that's going to attract unbelievers, we first have to have a relationship with each other. Right? It's like, think about this. Anytime there is a group of people of different cultures, all these uh, things, there's always going to be quarreling, conflict, misunderstanding, not agreeing with. And here's what I want to share with you about that. We need that. Now don't give me, don't, don't start messing with me. <laughs> right? We need misunderstandings. We need disagreements. We need all these things. Do you know why? Because they make us healthy. And there's nothing more heart-wrenching than a person who is offended leaving the church and taking it outside of the church. Because you know what happens 90% of the time when a person leaves the church, they never leave the church alone. And they take somebody with them. Here's the 
beautiful thing about this. If a person is offended, or for, if a person does not understand, if a person does not agree, and they address it, right? Guess what happens? There's growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a beautiful thing that happens, and instead of introducing a negative situation that unbelievers are waiting for, because what's the first thing that they say? The reason they don't come. That church is for the hypocrites. Well, the only reason they know there's a bunch of hypocrites in there because one hypocrite went out there and told them, hey, there's a bunch of hypocrites in there. <laughs> right? But if, you, if, if, you, if, if we grow together, you know what happens? A beautiful thing happens. And, and you know, and I tell some of the leaders this, when, when you have a disagreement with me and we talk about it, we both grow. But when you have a disagreement with me and you don't tell me, you leave, you cheat me, and you cheat yourself. Because you can't grow and neither can the leader. And this is why our relationship as a body of Christ is so important. Even if we don't understand. Even if we don't agree all the time. Even if there are some things, we still have the common denominator, which is Jesus Christ. He died for you and he died for me. He died for your children. He died for my children. He died for your finances. He died for my finances. He died for your well-being. He died for my well-being. And when we can grow and exemplify that in the body of Christ, when we're out there, guess what happens? People want to know, man, how do y'all do that? Yeah. Man, why are y'all like, why are y'all paying $10 a gallon and you still like, Man, you, I mean, why, why is it that even though in the midst of all this, you and your family, man, y'all are so connected, y'all are so, I mean, why is it? And, and guess what happens? I want what you have. Amen? Let me get out of your way. Uh, anytime, oh, no, 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 okay. We'll close with this. Here's what I desire for you today. Are you confident enough in Christ that no matter who's in office, no matter how much the gas costs, no matter what you don't agree with, no matter what you, are you confident enough? Are you free enough in your walk with Christ to hold true to what he asked of us and that is simply to represent him well not only on Sunday mornings but out there mm -hmm. in the world in the marketplace in the Just start of something. Let me get out of your way. Look what it says. I just thought of the scripture. Psalm 37 3 reads this. It kind of ties it all up together. Trust in the Lord. Right? Trust in the Lord. Dwell in the land. Right? Trust in the Lord. Dwell in, live your life. Look what he says. And feed. Right? That means consume. Feed on his faithfulness. No matter what's happening out here. No matter what's happening over there. You, look what he says. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed in his faithfulness. Verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness. I love this. As the light and your justice 
as the noon day. My desire for you, church, is simply this. Trust God. Do good. Dwell in the land. And feed off of his faithfulness. And guess what happens? You become the display case for Christ. Mm -hmm. and you, can, you can win more people for Christ by doing those things than preaching a sermon that's going to bring brimstone and from, from heaven. No, or, you know, I mean, you can preach fire and hell and all that from the pulpit, but if you cannot represent it at the gas pump, what you're about to say amounts to a hill of beans because you know what? Because we're living in a world where the world has seen much of the church and knows the church about what they don't believe in and have forgotten what we do stand for. And if we can get that picture back in the mind of people, they will begin to say, you know what? I want what Pastor Junior carries. I want what Pastor Bobby. I want to be like Tito. I want to be like Kim. I want to be like Sylvester. I want to be like Randy Ray. I want to be like Bruce. I want to be like Craig. I want to be like Michael Lee. I want to be like Chris. I want to be like them. I want to be like them. I want to be like them. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet this morning. No brother Sylvester, when he opened up, he said, our motto is enrich in Christ one soul at a time. And you know how you do that? By daily living. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just, just, just be yourself. Amen? Amen? Just bow our heads. I just want to pray over you this morning. How about, Father, I just thank you for every person represented this morning, Lord. Every family member represented, Lord. Lord, those that couldn't be here this morning, Lord, we just ask you to just embrace them where they're at at this moment, Lord. And Lord, Heavenly Father, you know my heart this morning, Lord, and it's simply, Lord, to grow your church, Lord, to be Christ-minded people, Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, Heavenly Father, and I ask you, Lord, this morning, Lord, for a supernatural strength, Lord, of increase of knowledge and wisdom of your word, Lord, that we may know your word, Lord, Heavenly Father, not only know it, but we may represent it, Lord, not only here in church, Lord, but when we're out with our families, when we're out in the marketplace, when we're at work, Lord, or when we're just simply at home with our spouses and our husbands, when we're just hanging around with our children, Lord, let our relationships be strong, Lord. Lord, for we know, Lord, that when it's all said and done, Lord, you desire, Lord, you desire to give us, as your word said, the desires of our heart. And our heart as a church, Lord, that we fathers, not only to succeed in the things of God, Lord, but to demonstrate, Lord, your love and your mercy for everyone, Lord. And Lord, give us opportunities to speak to others, Lord. Give us opportunities to shine your light, Lord. For your word says, Lord, that a light, Lord, Heavenly Father, does not, it's not put underneath the basket, Lord. But Lord, give us, the, give us the opportunities, Lord, to be the light, to be the salt, Lord. Lord, I pray over everyone here this morning, Lord. And we just thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.